Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Castle Falls. This movie tells the story of rival gangs seeking out millions of dollars hidden inside a luxury condominium that's scheduled to be demolished. But first, they have to deal with the janitor who found the loot first. Who will succeed in getting all the money? Let's find out in Castle Falls. Castle Falls begins by showing a man named Mike, who is a legendary MMA fighter. However, because Mike was not young anymore and had suffered a severe shoulder injury, he rarely fought anymore. One day, Mike met his former manager and asked him to bring him back to the battlefield. But his former manager said that he could no longer fight because of his age and a fairly severe shoulder injury. So he recently suffered three consecutive defeats in his last fight. However, Mike continues to insist on asking his former manager to help him fight back because right now he really needs money. Because his former manager still refuses to bring him back to the battlefield, Mike tries to convince him by challenging one of the fighters there. Initially, Mike had mastered the fight. However, Mike starts to get tired and his opponent takes advantage of this to corner him and finally defeats the once legendary MMA fighter. After experiencing this defeat, Mike begins to accept that he is no longer a great fighter who acts in the high-class battle arena. He is now bankrupt and kicked out of his apartment because he can no longer pay the rent. He then gave him his boxing gloves, which indicated that he had decided to retire as a fighter and tried to move on with his life by looking for another job to make ends meet. Mike then gets a job as a construction worker involved in the Castle High Hospital eviction project. The scene then switches and shows a middle-aged man named Richard, who lives with his daughter, Emily, who is lying sick in her bed. Emily suffers from leukemia, so it requires a lot of medical expenses. Not long after, a woman came to Richard and collected Emily's care while she was being treated at home. However, Richard did not have the money to pay the fees yet. He then received a call from the hospital telling him that Emily had to undergo chemotherapy again. But before that, they asked him to pay $400,000 for medical expenses because of the health insurance he had, run out for his previous medical expenses. Richard seemed very frustrated with his situation right now and wondered where else he would get the money to pay for Emily's treatment. The scene switches to a federal prison, where a black prisoner named Lando is arguing with another prisoner named Damien when he asks about the whereabouts of some money hidden by Lando. They then got into a fierce fight, and a warden seemed silent when Damien and his henchmen ganged up on Lando. The scene then switches back to Mike who seems to be daydreaming about his fate which has drastically changed, from a legendary MMA fighter to a construction worker with little wages. His employer, realizing that Mike was neglecting his job, reprimanded him and asked him to focus more on work because they had a deadline before Castle High was torn down. On the other hand, it appears that the mayor is making a statement in front of reporters that the Castle High Hospital will be evicted the day after tomorrow, and the land will be diverted for the construction of a new sports building. Lando, who happened to be watching television in his detention cell, seemed surprised to learn that Castle High Hospital was about to be evicted. Lando then asked to meet the chief warden, who was none other than Richard. Without further ado, Lando asked Richard to immediately transfer himself to the southern prison block while offering him some money that he could use to pay for his daughter's treatment. But because Lando mentioned Emily's situation, Richard immediately got angry and hit him. The next morning, Richard secretly went to Lando and asked about the money because he really needed money this time. Lando then reveals that he once robbed Damien of $3 million and that the money was hidden in the Castle High Hospital which was about to be torn down. Lando said he didn't want the money and wanted to help Richard get money to pay for his daughter's treatment. Lando only asked that Richard move himself to the South Block because he was always bullied by Damien and his henchmen if he stayed here. Richard then agreed to the offer. On the other hand, a warden turned out to be on Damien's side and reported to him about Richard who would move Lando to the South Block so that Damien and his henchmen would no longer disturb him. Hearing this, Damien immediately assumed that Lando must have asked Richard to take the booty money hidden by the man considering that Richard needed a lot of money. Damien then called his brother, Deacon, and asked him to handle the matter. Damien is a drug lord, and now Deacon runs Damien's drug business while he is in prison. While on a break, Mike seemed to be chatting casually with one of the workers named George, who said that in fact he didn't want to work as a construction employee with little income. However, George had no other choice, especially since he was already married with two children. Mike then revealed that he used to be an MMA fighter, but now he is bankrupt and forced to work anything to make a living. George then realized that Mike was really an MMA fighter and his two children turned out to be his fans. Because he has no place to live, Mike is forced to spend the night in a car park near the Castle High Hospital building. On the other hand, 
Deacon and his wife, Kat, seem to be monitoring the hospital building that will be demolished and intend to infiltrate there, after all the construction workers leave the place. While moving things, George tells Mike that he dreams of moving to Alaska with his family and then suggests he go to Alaska. When Mike was cleaning another room alone, he accidentally found a bag containing a very large amount of money, which was none other than the loot that Lando had hidden before he was thrown into prison. Because their working hours had ended, George then asked Mike to get out of there immediately. Mike didn't tell George about the money and just took $10 and hid it back. He planned to retrieve the bag containing the money after everyone had left. Elsewhere, Deacon is preparing his henchmen to infiltrate the Castle High Hospital building, awaiting Richard's arrival, as he has been informed by Lando of where the money is hidden. Deacon and his men would disguise themselves as construction workers to not arouse suspicion. Meanwhile, Richard was already preparing to go to Castle High and collect the money. Before leaving, Richard said goodbye to his daughter and said he had urgent work to finish. Meanwhile, Mike, who was standing in line with George for a beer, told his friend that he had left his jacket at the construction site and had to come back to get it. He then gave the $10 bill that he had taken and immediately rushed out of there. Mike then enters the Castle High Hospital building, which will soon be torn down to take the money. Mike was very happy to find out that the money was still where he had hidden it. Instead of going straight away, he took the time to count the money, thinking that no one would know about the money. On the other hand, Richard seemed to have entered the Castle High building, but one of Deacon's men noticed his arrival immediately informing his boss. Not long after, Deacon and his men entered the construction site through the left side of the building. But unexpectedly, a construction worker was assigned to stand guard until the time for the eviction arrived. Without thinking, Cat immediately killed the construction worker to not interfere with their plans. Meanwhile, Richard seemed to be heading to the sixth floor according to the directions previously told by Lando. He saw a pile of explosives that would be used to tear down the building in four hours. Deacon and his men were also seen entering the building. After arming themselves, they scattered around the building to look for Richard's whereabouts. On the other hand, Mike, who noticed Richard's presence in the next room, then hurriedly put the money back in his bag and left. As Mike was about to descend the stairs, he saw Deacon's men heading upstairs. Mike was finally back there again. Richard found a note scattered on the floor and then realized that someone had found the money and taken it. At the same time, he heard the sound of metal clanging, which was none other than Mike accidentally kicking an iron bar. However, Richard was not the only one who heard this. Deacon and his men also heard it and then rushed towards the sound source because they thought it was Richard. Knowing that someone else was also looking for the money, Mike immediately went into hiding and saw Richard who was also hiding from Deacon and his gang. But then, Deacon and his men's attention was distracted by the appearance of a man who had infiltrated the hospital building, who was none other than George who was looking for Mike's whereabouts because he had not returned. Cat accidentally finds a bag of money from George's pocket and thinks that George is the one who took the money. Deacon and his gang then tortured George and forced him to reveal the money's whereabouts, even though George knew nothing about the money. Mike, who saw this from his hiding place, could not help George. Because George never gave the information he wanted to know, Deacon then ordered his men to kill him. Knowing that George has been murdered, Mike accidentally reveals himself so that his whereabouts are known to Deacon and his gang. Deacon ordered his men to arrest Mike. On the other hand, Mike seems very guilty about George's death and decides to avenge his death. After hiding the money, he dropped several of Deacon's men before Cat and his gang finally cornered Mike. But Mike manages to break free from Cat and his henchmen and escape through the garbage can. However, Richard was already there and immediately caught Mike. Richard then threatens Mike with a knife and forces him to tell him where he hid the money. But Mike argues that he is just a construction worker and knows absolutely nothing about money. Seeing Richard slightly off guard, Mike then attacked him so that the two got into a fierce fight before finally being stopped by one of Deacon's henchmen who threatened the two at gunpoint. Mike and Richard tried to calm him down and managed to catch him off guard so Mike could immobilize him. However, the rest of Deacon's men began to arrive, so Mike and Richard had no other choice but to flee from there. Deacon then orders his men to block access in and out of the building and tries to make a deal with Mike to give up the money and Deacon will keep him alive. But of course, Mike ignored the offer and chose to fight Deacon's men. Mike, who was trapped by Deacon's men in the building, then jumped out the window while hanging from the thick curtains. But as Deacon and his henchmen keep shooting at him from below, he finally tries to get back inside the building, where he is confronted by Cat pointing a gun at him. Luckily, Richard came and hit Cat, pushing her body against the window. Thinking that the one by the window was Mike, Deacon and his men kept shooting at him until they found out it was Cat. Deacon is devastated to see his wife who died horribly after falling from a height then vows not to let Mike and Richard out of the building alive. On the other hand, Richard treated Mike's injured arm then asked him about money. 
but Mike still argues that he is just a construction worker and knows nothing about the money. Mike and Richard confront Deacon's men again, but both manage to kill them all. Mike then pointed a gun at Richard, thinking that Richard was a Deacon gang in disguise. But Richard immediately denied it and revealed that he was forced to do all this because he no longer had the money to treat his daughter. Mike finally believed Richard's words. He then told Deacon via walkie-talkie to come personally and collect the money upstairs. After that, Mike took the money he had hidden and shared it with Richard. Richard then invites Mike to get out of the building immediately, but Mike intends to slaughter Deacon and his henchmen to avenge George's death. Given that the Castle High building will be torn down in a few moments, Richard also assures Mike that Deacon and his men will die from the explosion. After thinking about this, he finally gave up and intended to run away with Richard. On the other hand, the mayor and the other construction workers were preparing to tear down the Castle High building in 15 minutes. Deacon and one of his remaining men then chase after Mike and Richard who try to escape through the roof of the building, where they engage in a firefight, causing Mike to be restrained and hide to avoid Deacon's attack. Mike then asked Richard to go first, while he would fight Deacon alone. Deacon then ordered his men to come down and guard at the access to the exit of the building to prevent Richard from running away with the money. When Mike runs out of ammo, he then challenges Deacon to a close-range fight. Meanwhile, Richard managed to kill the only remaining Deacon henchmen and fled by driving their truck. Mike finally managed to beat Deacon, then rushed off with the money. Because Castle High will be torn down in a few minutes, Mike is forced to jump into Richard's truck, while Deacon is still alive, trying to collect the money that is scattered on the roof. The Castle High Hospital building was finally torn down along with Richard and Mike who drove away from the collapsed building, while Deacon's fate is unknown and may be buried in the building that has been destroyed. A few days later, Mike gave George's family some money to help them deal with financial problems after his death. After that, he drives to Alaska, following George's advice. Meanwhile, Richard moved Damien to the South Block, which turned out to be one of Lando's requests because he intended to kill Damien there. Through this film, we are shown the struggle of a father for the sake of his daughter's recovery. Richard is willing to do anything to get money to pay for the treatment of his ailing daughter. Besides, we might have to walk through an abandoned building once in a while because who knows, we'll find a bag full of money hidden there, just like what happened to Mike.